that day, it was a beautiful day. The kind of day you'd walk out and say, oh my God, this is like a gorgeous day. Chuck, he was there in the city before seven. We were both in the same union, building elevators in New York. For him to be in the city was actually not common. He usually worked in Jersey. I've always thought that he went to Mass and then walked the 20 blocks to the job, which was the Mercer Hotel. He got set up in the motor room, and then I guess he heard what happened. the feeling in New York City today. New York City is in shock. I had no idea what was going on. I hear the radio on and I hear about, the, you know, a plane crash into the Trade Center. So I'm like, oh my God. I left my job when the first building came down and then uh, we saw the dust coming again so we knew that the second building had gone down. I didn't really worry about him because I knew the address he was working at. And I said, I'm like, all right, he's far, he's 20 blocks away, he's good. Chuck's partner, Danny, his wife calls Mary, says that Chuck's okay. So I didn't think anything of it. And then, and then Mary called me and Mary says, yeah, something's really weird. My, my brother Raymond calls me eventually and I say, Raymond, so what's going on? Like, you know, Mary still hasn't heard from Chuck yet. And he just says, uh, I don't really know, but I don't think it's good. I got home at 5.30 and there was like 25 missed calls. And my phone on my answering machine, it was my sister Kathy. And she kept telling me, call me back, call me back, call me back. And she said to me, she said, Chuck is missing. I said, what? Chuck was one of the most humble people in the world. Like he just, he just did things from the goodness of his heart. He was just plain Chuck. <laughs> he was constantly giving money to the homeless in New York on the way to work. Somebody would be on the side of the road with a flat tire and he would pull over and he would change the tire in the rain or whatever and stuff. I never met nobody like him. Chuck was the good kid. He was always good. Faith was very important to him. He was a member of the Knights. He went to daily mass. He said the rosary all the time. I felt like it was his top priority. God had a plan for him that day, and his plan was to go ahead and rescue those people, and that was his purpose in life. He, he, was, he was meant to do the job, and God called him home. The biggest part of Chuck's story is he was a rescue worker that nobody expected to be there. Chuck ran from the other job, which was 20 blocks away. Danny was late to work. He saw Chuck running. He pulled over the, the work van and said to him, what are you doing? He said, I have to go help some people. Uh, supposedly the van pulled up right literally in front. It was before anything collapsed and pulled it right up in front. Chuck jumped out. Danny said, don't, and he did. And then he just ran into the building. They found his body on Saturday. January 5th. His favorite day of the year was January 6th, because that was the day the Three Kings 
brought the gifts to the Christ child when Jesus was born. He was found in an elevator shaft in the South Tower, which he was last seen running into the North Tower. On his person, he had um, the $77, the rosary, uh, his license. I've always said one of the things with Chuck is one of the richest men I've ever known. He was just a role model to show people this is the way life is supposed to be lived. Just a caring, you know, genuine person, a man of great faith. The picture over here on the wall is him writing in his uh, journal. Learning to love is the key to all life. Help me to light the way for those in the dark. And when I enter the darkness, let me not panic, but patiently wait to remember the light. <laughs>